I'm going to give you an overview of my entire process for creating a character in Blender, every step from sculpting to retopologizing, a little bit of shading, and posing. Let's get started. So when I'm first starting off with a character, I take the default cube and I use it to measure out the height of my character. This helps us establish a world scale, and once we do this, we can go into making the parts of the character. I like to start with the head. So I'll take primitive shapes like cubes, spheres, cylinders, and I'll rotate them, move them around, put them in place, and basically just build out a general base shape for our character. This is called blocking out your character. And once we block out the character, we can apply all of these modifiers and go right into sculpt mode where I'll remesh the character. Using tools like the smooth brush, or my new favorite, the mesh filter, you can just apply a base smoothing coat over the entire thing. Then I like to go in and just start sculpting some detail in here. Here you can see I'm starting with the ears, and then I rotate my view around a little bit and mess with the mouth. Then I'll just keep sculpting, using basic masks and other general brushes to push and pull large shapes around. Like At this point, I'm really still trying to figure out the shape of my character, and it's not at all about the details right now. I'm just pushing around things and trying to get a feel for the character. Once I'm enjoying the overall shape, I'll start actually sculpting in a little bit more detail and making things pop a little bit. Here I decided, let me give a little bit more detail to the nose than what I put in the reference drawing. I also love using this scrape brush. It just adds little sharp planes to the face to make everything look intentional. You know, if, you're, if your character is too soft and it's just really smoothy and smushy all around, it just, it feels way too soft, it feels wrong. So it's great to combine sharps with softness. It's kind of, a, it's, it's a contrast kind of thing. Once I'm liking the way my default shape is coming out for the face, it's time to do basically the same thing for the body. I'll then move in and start blocking out the torso. Again, this is not about detail at this point, this is about overall shape. And depending on how I'm feeling that day, maybe I'll bring the arm in as well. In this case, I did both the arms and the torso in one base shape before I actually brought them together. You can see here now that I'm putting this hand together, I'm really thinking of the entire hand as basically a bunch of primitive shapes. Don't set out to sculpt a hand from nothing. Think of, you know, break it down into smaller pieces. Okay, we have the palm. We have five fingers. I have broke down each finger into three parts because there's kind of, it's kind of like that, you know? And... Just push and place them all together until they feel right. And, you know, we, we have that reference right in front of us. You can just look down at your hand and see what what should it be, right? And then once it feels right, we can just apply any modifiers we have, jump into sculpt mode. And then it's just as easy as remeshing the entire thing, smoothing it out, and adding a little bit extra detail if you like. Now here I'm going to add a mirror modifier because, you know, two arms, you know how that kind of thing works. And then I'm going to bring it in and connect it to the torso at this point. I'm not attaching it to the head just yet. I don't know why. It's personal preference. I feel like the head is like, let's just not mess up the head for whatever reason. But same deal with the body. We're going to apply everything we have, merge it all together, remesh it, and start, start sculpting in some extra detail. I really like using this clay strips brush because it feels like I'm just adding like layers of muscle where it should be and it gets really detailed and then I just I just smooth it back out. Okay, we're like halfway there. Now let's add the legs in. Again, same deal. We're just using basic geometry with nothing crazy. We're really just trying to get the mesh into position and just get something there. So that way we have something to sculpt off of. So as you can see, subdivision surface modifier, mirror modifier, the usual, we're used to this. I'm feeling like this shape is getting pretty good, and I'm checking it from all angles. It's time to remesh and go right into sculpting. And now we have this high poly sculpt. Again, same deal. Let's merge the body and the legs together and smooth out that joint. And all right, now it's all part of the same thing. And we'll go over it another time with a little fine, fine tooth comb and just feeling out this shape. You honestly don't have to be an expert at sculpting to just start. It's really just fun. It's like, you don't have to be a good painter to paint. You don't have to be a good drawer to pick up a pencil and draw. You can just start sculpting and honestly just mess around with what you can do. So to make these boots here, I just took a couple of cylinders and I'm really just doing the basic movements. Scaling, rotating, moving, 
pushing these things into sort of what feels right. And then once I get what I think feels right, generally, I will go into sculpt mode and remesh this guy. Now, like we saw before, this is an incredibly dense, unanimatable piece of geometry that we can just sculpt on top of and build out some shapes, kind of like the rest of our project right now. But then once I'm ready to turn them into an actual animatable piece of geometry, I use this quad remesher, which is an add-on by Exoside, and it is incredible. It allows you to take high poly sculpts and just turn them into basically animatable geometry. All right, the boots are on the feet. Let's move on to the rest of the clothing now. So I'm gonna just sort of take my sculpts here and just duplicate them and move them into a collection called Backup. I like to do this in case I get too far along and I wanna roll back to something else. I just, it doesn't hurt to put them in a collection and then turn off the collection. And now that we have the backups, I'm actually going to go and add a little more detail to our body sculpt. Uh, kind of like what we talked about before, getting out that scrape brush and making some harsh edges on it, some sharp lines, just to give a little extra detail to our mesh. It's really nice to have some sharps that contrast with a lot of the soft shapes. At this point, I've also gone through and merged the head with the body, so I have one high poly dense body sculpt that literally encompasses everything that is skin. I decided I want to get my character eyes. I wasn't going to do eyes at first, but I figure, yeah, why not? We're here. I just use a sphere, honestly, mirror it from one side to the other. And then once the eyeballs are in place, you can just jump right back onto the high poly body sculpt and put some eyelids in there. I like to just sculpt them right over top of the eyeball because you can just see how they land and it. It kind of uh, gives you a good instant feedback. When I'm sculpting eyelids, I love to add little skin folds and skin creases in there that just make things feel so dynamic. All right, what do you say we add some clothes onto our naked fella here, huh? I always start with clothes by just duplicating the character outright. Go into sculpt mode and grab the box trim. And then on your duplicated character mesh, box trim away pieces you don't want. So right now we're making pants. I'm gonna cut away the top section of the torso. And then what we're left with is a high poly section of just the bottom part of the character. And because it's just the bottom part of the character, this can essentially just be your pants. As you see, I just take these and then I start sculpting right on top of this. I inflate it a little bit, add some creases to it. And before you know it, you have pants that are perfectly on your character because they once were your character. This is the general workflow for how I do all of the clothes in Blender. I'll start with the character, duplicate the character, go to the section that I want, cut everything else away, and then start here as a base for what my clothing piece is. Let's go ahead and do that for the torso. So starting here, I've duplicated the character. I'll use box trim to hack off just the head. Then if I click and hold on the box trim tool, I can change it to a lasso trim tool which is the same thing, except you can draw a lasso shape. Okay, the next cut, let's cut the arms off. Nice, okay. Now let's go back to box trim and we'll cut off the legs. All right, we have just the starting place for our tank top. I will remesh it and then inflate the whole thing using mesh filter. All right, we now have a shirt too. So we have a shirt and pants. Let's go ahead and give the shirt the same treatment we did for the pants giving it a little more detail, adding some wrinkles here and there, making it feel like a shirt and not just an extension of the body. So once I add all these wrinkles onto the shirt, all the wrinkles and creases, it's good practice to bring the pants back in and then see if there's any overlap or collisions, which sure enough there are. And it's just as simple as pulling the shirt away from those. So here I'm just taking a good look at my character mesh, admiring what I've built so far. And let me go ahead and model up a quick hat Sort of how we did before, except this time I'm going to start with a plane, so that way there's no thickness, and I can just focus on the shape of everything, and I'll use a solidify modifier to give it that thickness. If you're sculpting on something too thin, it can be really easy to mess up that shape and kind of cross over one side from the other. It's honestly just easier to start with a plane, you know, something that's infinitely thin, and then we can procedurally add the thickness later. All right, congrats. If you made it this far, that means your character is fully sculpted at a high poly level, and it's time to retopologize and make our character animatable. 
So starting with the body, what I do is I duplicate the high poly mesh and rename it to be remesh underscore body or whatever shape you're running. At this point, I can run it through the quad remesher with a symmetry of X at a quad count of about 6400. And then I have a retopologized low poly version of the model. The problem here is that the details are essentially all gone. So there's an easy way to bring it back. What we do is we add a multi-res modifier followed by a shrink wrap modifier. The shrink wrap modifier should be targeting the high poly mesh. Now, like magic, as I increase the subdivision level in the multi-res modifier, you'll see it starts to take form of that original sculpt shape we did closer and closer. But there's some weird artifacting around the eyes, as you can see, and that's just a result of this wrap method that the shrink wrap is using. All we have to do is change the wrap method from nearest surface point to project, and then also just check this little negative button here as well. So that way it can check both sides of the mesh. What this gives us is essentially a perfect copy of our sculpt with good topology. Now, if we just apply the shrink wrap modifier, it will bake all of that high poly detail right into the multi-res modifier. That's the whole point of the multi-res modifier is it allows you to work with a character and then add in detail at render time. Now I'm just going to do a little cleanup before I continue on doing this process for the rest. So let me just recap this process slowly as we do the rest of these objects. What we do is you take the high poly sculpt, duplicate that, and then run it through quad remesher. This gives us the animatable, good topology version of our sculpt. We then add a multi-res modifier and a shrink wrap modifier. The shrink wrap modifier targets the high poly version, sort of the one-to-one -one version of itself. And then you increase the levels of subdivision on the multi-res modifier. As it starts to take shape, whenever we like the level of detail there, we can apply the shrink wrap modifier to bake all of that detail right into the multi-res modifier. And then it acts as kind of like a glorified subdivision surface modifier. But instead of smoothing it out as it subdivides, it actually subdivides into the place of the high poly sculpt. Then I move on to making some base materials here. I'll start with a skin material. Generally, I like to add in a skin material by just picking a skin color, giving it some subsurface scattering, and then just increasing the specular value to something like 1.2 or 1.4, something in that range. All right, it's mustache time. Kind of like we did before, I want to add a shrink wrap modifier and get this guy touching the face. This is going to be our base for where hair comes out of for the mustache. I'll add a new particle system set to hair, and I'll change the number down to like 1 or something really small, because we're going to really rely on this one hair as our guide curve, and we'll use interpolated children to do the rest. It's always good to make sure you name your hair system so you know what they are, because it can really quickly get out of control. Because we have this one control hair, we can go into the children section and set it to be interpolated children. What this means is it will make a bunch of child hairs that all interpolate around how many control hairs you have. In my case, it's one, but I'm going to just take a look at 250 children. I'll go into the render view tabs and under curves, if we change the viewport display from strand to strip, we can see the actual shape of this hair a whole lot easier. So I increased my hair number from one to five because I want to have five curve guides that will determine how these children move. I'm also going to change the diameter root just to point one because these hairs are a little thick right now. And I'm going to use vertex groups here to allow us to only work with one side of the face at a time. So to get the look I want, I go into the children and under clumping, I want to set these all to clump because I want to get little pointy jagged mustache pieces that I can then pull apart with roughness. And then using the particle sculpt tools, I can just move my mustache into position and sort of shape it like a mustache would be. Now that my sculpt is feeling right, I'm going to go back into my settings here and just start messing with the settings under the roughness. This is where you can really start to get some good feel for like how the hair characteristics are. Generally, you can determine the look and feel of that using the roughness sliders right under the children settings in your hair. The cool thing is because we already set these up once, I can add a new particle system and just click to choose the exact same settings as the other one. So we don't have to go and reinvent the wheel. We already made what the mustache looks like for one side. I'll just use the other half of my vertex group and sculpt out the shape of the other side of the mustache.
for the mustache shading. You can go as crazy as you want with the shading, but it can really be as easy as just adding the principled hair BSDF, and that just like looks like hair as is. You just pick the hair color and go. And honestly, it's already set for a pretty good mustache color, so one node. So I'm now just going through and dropping in a bunch of base materials for everything else, be the clothing and the shoes and all that stuff, and just taking a look at my character and getting ready for the final pass, which is rigging our character. So, if you know me from my other videos, you know that I love using Auto Rig Pro. Auto Rig Pro is great. It makes rigging the entire character a breeze. I've actually already put together a full tutorial on how to rig a character using Auto Rig Pro. Click this link up here if you want to find out how to do that. But it's pretty simple. There's just a bunch of control points and you line everything up. And then you just hit match to rig. In my opinion, the true magic of where Auto Rig Pro comes in handy is their binding features or their auto weighting feature is way better than the blender automatic weights that's the real reason i use it is because i barely have to do any weight painting ever when it comes to this character the only time i have to do weight painting is right around the eyes it tends to when you have the eyelids it tends to just move the cheeks too much and move the nose too much so really it just requires a tiny bit of weight painting and the last thing I did for this character is I thought he needed a little bit of body hair because he wasn't gross enough, right? So I added a new vertex group and just started painting in some sections where he would have some, some scraggly body hair, like on his chest and below his chin. Nothing crazy, but just little, little pokes of hair coming out here and there. And it's really easy just to make a new hair system and apply it only where the vertex group is. A lot of times I like to add not only the density, but the length vertex group as well. So things tend to blend a little better as they go through. And kind of like we were doing before, I'm just going through here and finding the right settings that kind of feel just right and gross enough for this character. Everything else from here is really final touches of little things for the assets. Like for example, I added some fuzz to this hat and then I took the same fuzz and put it on the shirt and the pants just to kind of make everything have a little more of a, a textural feel to it that you could feel like you could just reach out and grab it. Once I did that, I was then able just to bring my character into my scene and start posing him out. Um, I really wanted this character just to feel, I don't know, goofy and old and out of touch and thinks he's still a cowboy when probably isn't anymore but it's just it's then it's just fun you know you just get the pose and start playing with the puppet at this point and finding a, a nice angle to take your photograph from and right now i am actively figuring out how the thumbnail looks so you're getting the first look at the thumbnail that you clicked on i used to be so intimidated at sculpting my characters because i was like oh I'm not a sculptor. I just better stick to modeling my characters. But what I found was the moment I started sculpting, I was making better characters than I was when I was modeling. So if you think about it like that, it's like, you know, the only person you're, you should be in competition with is yourself because you're on your own journey to get better at art. So, hey, maybe try sculpting. Maybe you'll be like, I like this better. And maybe you'll be like, I hate sculpting. I'm going to keep modeling my characters. That's fine, too. At least you found out, you know? Thank you guys so much for watching me sculpt this character. Had a lot of fun doing it. If you make something cool, please send it to me on Instagram or Twitter at LoganGardener3D. I love seeing the work you guys make, and I'm really hyped for this style of character creation going forward. For me, it's just a process that makes a lot of sense, and I love being able to share it with you. So, till next time.